Lesbian couples tend to face more challenges in their relationships than straight couples, from trying to win the approval of their friends and family to settling down and starting their own family, there are struggles for an unconventional couple. Fortunately, society has been more accepting of same-sex relationships in recent years, but that doesn't mean that there aren't hurdles. Similar to other lesbian couples, two women from Seattle, Washington used the artificial insemination method to have kids and build a family. When they finally had their daughters, they thought everything was worth it. They were so happy for a while and couldn't ask for anything more. Unfortunately, the two eventually split. Over 10 years later, one of the women realized why she had to go through all that heartbreak. Jessica Scheer was a 42-year-old woman from Oregon. She worked as a marketing specialist, but her real passion was to fight for her right to love. She has been doing it her whole life. All she wanted was love and happiness like everyone else. When Jessica was in her mid-twenties, she met the girl of her dreams. They quickly started dating and were happy together. Early on in their relationship, the couple received a lot of judgment and criticism. Despite other people's opinions, though, the two decided to move in together. Both women had good jobs and supportive families that approved of their relationship. Right before a year of dating, the beautiful couple decided to get married. Jessica and her wife lived in a house in Ohio together. It was a perfect location because they were close to Jessica's family. The newlyweds saw a bright and happy future together and began planning their lives. They definitely wanted to create their fantasy home, but one of their biggest priorities was having babies. Both women dreamed of becoming mothers and they were determined. Luckily, there are a lot of artificial methods to help them. The couple got incredible support from their close friends, but even strangers on the internet applauded them. Both girls expressed how grateful they are to be born into a generation that allows them to have kids as a same-sex couple. They had big plans and their eyes on the future. Jessica was filled with joy whenever she discussed having children with her wife. She was so pleased that they both shared the same passion for having a big family. When they imagined themselves as parents, they visualized not one but four children. They really wanted this. In fact, they picked out names for their kids before they even entered their lives. Of course, this wouldn't be easy because they had to start from scratch. Still, they were excited to become the first lesbian parents in the American Midwest. However, the couple didn't really grasp all the challenges they would come across. I mean, it was easy to plan out what they wanted, but the execution proved to be harder. Obviously, the first step for the happy couple was finding a sperm donor. Jessica's wife was excited to tell her that her brother-in-law offered to help. He seemed to have no problem with the idea, but Jessica was still extremely reluctant. She took a class on the legal rights of gay and lesbian parents when she attended college. She learned that this is a tricky situation. Some courts recognize sperm donation as an act of parenting. This usually means that if something happens to the birth mom, custody rights would go to the donor. She was just saddened by the thought of her future children being removed from the house to live with people they barely know. Jessica ultimately rejected that option. After hearing about the custody rights, Jessica's wife agreed that it wouldn't be a good idea to get a sperm donor they didn't know. They were back at square one. Even though there are multiple sperm banks in the world, they couldn't find one that fit their plans. After days of research, they finally found one that might work. Luckily, the couple discovered a sperm bank that ships the precious product right to them. Also, they found out that they have anonymous donors who are required to sign legal papers that completely remove their custody rights. For Jessica and her wife, it seemed like a no-brainer. This seemed like the best option. Not long after, the plans were set in motion. The sperm bank provided the couple with the essential information about each of the possible donors. As they were looking through the anonymous candidates, both women had the same thing in mind. They were leaning towards someone who had an inclination for literature and sport. When they found a profile of a writer and musician, they were both immediately interested. The man listed has wavy brown hair and average height and weight. It was also written that the donor worked as a taxi driver, and the couple was hooked. They both saw a man who was becoming a writer, and meanwhile, he's picking up real-life stories from the people he drives around. Although there was no picture of the anonymous donor, they made their decision right away. Even though the sperm bank delivers what's needed directly to their house, they wanted to get some medical advice about the procedure. They learned all about artificial insemination and acquired information about what exactly they needed to do. Just one month later, both women were very confident in what they were doing. Jessica's job required her to work from home, so the couple came to a mutual decision that she would be the one to carry the baby. She had absolutely no complaints and couldn't wait to start a family. The match was made and the order was placed. 
Jessica and her wife were about to make their dreams come true, they couldn't be more excited. The procedure meant that they had to wait for the perfect timing, therefore Jessica had to inseminate twice a month. She did everything in her power to get every sperm as close as she could to the egg. Her efforts finally paid off after seven months of trying. Jessica was finally pregnant. Both women were filled with happiness and couldn't wait to tell their loved ones the news. Jessica and her wife rarely spoke about the sperm donor throughout her pregnancy. Their main concern was to make sure Jessica and the baby were both healthy. Thankfully, they were both in excellent condition. At night, however, they honored the donor's literary genes by reading stories to their future bookworm. Finally, in June 2005, Jessica gave birth to her precious baby and her life completely changed. Jessica and her wife couldn't be happier. They described their beautiful daughter as perfect and decided to name the lovely new addition to their family, Alice. The adorable newborn had a tiny nose, a thin mouth, and stunning emerald eyes. Alice was quickly growing up to be a talented and smart young woman. She made her parents very proud. That's why, with their hearts filled with joy, Jessica and her wife wanted to repeat this entire process. They knew they wanted more kids, but they didn't want to wait. Alice was just a baby, but they had so much love to give. Jessica and her wife felt like they were ready for their second child, despite Alice being just a few months old at the time. Since Jessica had the first baby and her wife's workload got lighter, they decided it would be her turn to have the baby. Plus, her wife also wanted to experience pregnancy and everything that comes with it. Since their firstborn was the perfect child, the couple immediately knew they wanted to use the same sperm donor as before. Since they already went through this whole ordeal to have Alice already, it was easier the second time around. They got what they wanted much sooner than they expected. Jessica's wife was pregnant. When Jessica's wife gave birth to their second child, Alice was only 18 months old. They decided to name their beautiful, bouncy baby daughter Soren. When they looked at their two incredible children together, they started to notice some striking similarities. In addition to their facial features, they noticed that Soren had the same mannerisms as Alice did when she was a baby. It was remarkable to see the two daughters together. Their Ohio house completely transformed into a happy home. It wasn't always easy to raise two kids, but the couple was content and didn't have any regrets. It was actually the opposite. They had a happy family life and were delighted with the way things worked out. Since it was no longer just the two of them, Jessica and her wife had to work extra hard. They wanted to give their children the best of everything, plus they already had dreams of having a total of four kids. They were both pleasantly surprised that parenting was going pretty smoothly for them. They were well aware that one day their daughters will ask about their situation. However, the couple was confident that they would be able to explain to their children how they came into their lives and how loved they are. Things were good and Jessica's dreams turned into reality. The family was happy and loving, but then something happened that changed everything. Jessica started to question everything she believed in. Jessica's wife made a shocking decision when Alice was three and Soren was one. With no warning, she revealed that she was no longer happy with their relationship. This news came as a complete surprise to Jessica. She was caught completely off guard and she couldn't believe it. Jessica thought maybe there was some kind of misunderstanding and they could work it out. Unfortunately, there was no talking her wife out of separating. She'd already made her decision. Since they had kids together and were legally married, it wasn't easy to just drop everything. Sadly, it didn't matter. There was absolutely nothing Jessica could do to make the relationship work. She was heartbroken and devastated. The worst part is that Jessica had no closure. Her wife didn't give her any explanation for why she decided to end their marriage out of nowhere. Jessica's first thought was that maybe she met someone else. However, her wife utterly denied it. Her reasoning was that she woke up one day and felt the spark was gone. At that point, Jessica didn't want to hear anymore. She realized there was no reconciling the marriage, it was over. Even though Jessica was shattered, she knew she couldn't have a breakdown. She needed to be strong for Alice and Soren. After her wife left the house, her one and only request was to see the kids on weekends. Not long after leaving the house, Jessica received divorce papers from her wife. At this point, she knew she wasn't changing her mind. It was at that moment where Jessica decided she was going to dedicate her life to raising her kids. I mean, her ex-wife didn't seem to be interested in fighting for custody rights. Jessica continued to parent her wonderful daughters five days a week for years. The sisters were growing up to be beautiful, smart, caring girls. Those kids were the reason Jessica's broken heart was able to heal. 
She never completely recovered from the pain her ex-wife caused her, but the two remained civil, especially in front of their daughters. Then Jessica's wife did something else, leaving her saddened once again. For seven years, things worked as well as they could under the circumstances, but Alice was 10 years old when she experienced heartbreak for the first time. Since Jessica's ex-wife was Soren's biological mother, she had an intimate and special connection with her. Therefore, she didn't spend as much time with Alice. She was never mean to Alice or anything like that, but it was obvious that she was prioritizing Soren. So naturally, her ex-wife came to pick up Soren for a weekend getaway. Alice had some homework to do and stayed home. When it was time for Soren to come home, Jessica realized that her ex-wife was planning on running away. They got tricked and Jessica was furious. The only thing more difficult than having your heart broken is seeing your child with a broken heart. Jessica tried to explain what was going on to Alice, but she couldn't be fooled. She already realized that her other mom blocked her calls. Alice understood the situation and realized she wanted to cut all ties with them. Jessica was extremely angry about her inconsiderate ex-wife separating their family. However, Jessica knew she had rights to their daughters too. Alice was confused and sad. Jessica tried to explain to her once again why Soren had to go away for a while. She promised her that she would do everything in her power to make sure that she could see her sister again. It didn't take long for Jessica's happy home to turn into a lonely apartment. Evidently, it was also difficult for Alice to experience all these changes firsthand. She was extremely close to Jessica's ex-wife's family, specifically her grandparents. Sadly, even her aunts, uncles, and cousins seemed to forget all about Alice. That side of the family never sent birthday cards, and even the occasional phone calls stopped. Even though she was consumed with her own pain, what devastated Jessica even more was seeing her daughter sad. Alice was an innocent child with a big heart and didn't deserve any of this. One day, Alice discovered a way to channel her anger and cope with a loss. After not seeing her little sister for over a year, Alice started getting used to the situation. She still wondered about Soren and asked Jessica where she was, but then her attention turned to something else. Alice grew curious about her biological father. She didn't want to sit down, hoping her mother and sister would come back, so she decided to find out more about her real family. When Alice first asked her mom about her biological father, Jessica didn't know how to react. She knew this would happen one day, but she thought her wife would be by her side and that they would tell the kids together. She didn't want her daughter to hear rumors or get the wrong impression from other people. It was time to tell Alice the truth. Jessica's mother enjoyed talking about her ethnic Cornish background. All the wonderful stories were what eventually triggered Alice's curiosity about her background and genetic heritage. Nowadays, there is no shortage of DNA testing kits available on the market. There was one thing Alice wanted, and she made one request to her grandmother. Alice finally got her wish granted on Christmas Day in 2016. Her present from Grandma was an innovative and progressive genealogy kit called 23andMe, only the best for 11-year-old Alice. This was the only thing she wanted, and she was so excited. She patiently waited to get the answers she was looking for. To her surprise, it only took two months for the first leads to come back. For about eight weeks, Jessica couldn't explain or even understand how she was feeling. She was consumed with emotion, but she was happy to see her daughter with revived energy. She finally had something to be excited about. The quest was an adventure for Alice, and it seemed like she found a new purpose in life. Finally, the DNA results came back. Jessica and Alice were sitting next to each other, feeling nervous together. There was a section on the site called DNA Relatives. Alice clicked on it and the first thing that came up was Aaron Long, 50% father. Next, there was a 25% match for Bryce Gallo, a possible brother. Jessica immediately knew what her daughter was thinking. With all the internet information out there, Alice and her mother decided to do some of their own research. Alice wanted to send a note to the website immediately. Jessica, on the other hand, wanted to wait until they knew some more information about who her father is. When she typed Aaron Long into the search box, a lot came up. The donor could be any one of them. Luckily, since Jessica was a marketing specialist, she knew exactly what to do and how to narrow down her options. She wasn't sure she could find the donor on the spot, but she knew eventually she would. It just might take some time. After several misses, Jessica knew she was coming close to a discovery. Fortunately, Jessica remembered the date of donation written on the sperm vitals that she used. The year was 1994. This really helped Jessica narrow down the search. 
By calculating the birth and graduation year, she can start eliminating some of the Aaron Longs on the list. She finally found the man that seemed to be the correct age. Plus, he had a master's degree in literature. Jessica's heart skipped a beat. She knew it was him, but she needed to be 100% certain. In his picture, Aaron was wearing a green shirt and playing the trombone. She also noticed that he worked as a communication specialist in Seattle, but after reading the next two words, Jessica was stunned. It said that he was a writer and musician, just what she was looking for. As soon as Jessica realized she might have found the right guy, it was easier to track down this specific Aaron Long with available internet and social media information. She did some stalking, and it didn't take long for her to find his Facebook. His profile featured some high school photos that left Jessica stunned once again. All of her doubts disappeared. Alice was an exact copy of the man in the pictures. They had the same smile. That's when Jessica became just as curious as her daughter was. She didn't waste any time before sending Aaron Long a message. Jessica's marketing specialist skills come in handy once again. She needed to think of the perfect message to send, one that is sure to get a response. Jessica's biggest concern was disappointing her daughter. Since they've already started to look for the donor, Jessica wasn't going to give up without doing everything it takes. She went on the DNA testing site and sent him a message. She wrote, Hi Aaron, I actually have two daughters who'd match you. My ex has my youngest daughter, she's not on the DNA testing site. If you're interested in trading family photos, etc., we're available. All Jessica really wanted was to get a response. She knew it would crush her daughter if she didn't. Just as they hoped, Aaron immediately responded. He was a friendly man who had no problem sharing information about himself. She already knew a lot because of her research, but not enough. When Aaron asked her if she had any questions for him, she fired away. She wanted to confirm that he was the shortest person in his family. Turns out it was true. They had a short chat on the DNA testing site, but then the two decided to connect through their personal social networking accounts. That way it would be easier to continue their conversation. After becoming friends online, Aaron sent her a 50-page long history of his life. Jessica didn't expect to enjoy reading his story. Alice didn't forget that DNA testing revealed a match for a potential brother. She asked her mom if they can please contact Bryce Gallo as well. Jessica sent a message to Bryce and just like Aaron, he answered immediately. He had already connected with his biological father and he had already found another sister who was 19 at the time named Maddie. After speaking with Bryce, Jessica learned a lot of information. He added that so far, he had already found six kids that were biologically Aaron's. Alice and Soren were number seven and eight. That is a lot of kids. Alice was so excited. As soon as she found out she had sisters, Alice wanted nothing but to meet them. The siblings continued to communicate for about a month. Then one day, Bryce and Maddie sent Alice a message about their plans. They decided to go to Seattle. They wanted to meet Aaron Long in person and invited Alice to join them. The more the merrier. Jessica had absolutely no objection and thought it was a wonderful idea. Jessica didn't need any convincing and the supportive mother even set up the meeting. She traveled to Seattle with the kids. All she really wanted was to see that beautiful smile on her daughter's face. If seeing her long lost sibling will make her happy, Jessica wasn't going to interfere. Everyone was excited and nervous about meeting Aaron in person. Aaron was in Seattle getting excited. He planned a huge party for the meeting. He invited all of his elementary school friends, high school friends, and college friends. He even told his ex-girlfriends to come with their new partners and kids. Jessica realized very quickly that the cool father was happy about his children. He wanted to welcome them and show off this big family. Everyone was having a good time. The gang then played a game called Nature or Nurture. Jessica was amused by this game. She couldn't wait to see the similarities between Aaron and these kids. Although he didn't raise them, Jessica found herself smiling at the magic of DNA. She was thrilled to see Alice's smiling face. During their Seattle vacation, everyone had a great time. Aaron had told Jessica that there must have been a mix-up at the Bureau of Boyfriends. She felt flattered and enjoyed the attention, but Jessica just smiled. Ironically, she was in a relationship with a man whose name was also Aaron at the time. Fate stepped in once again. When she returned from the trip, Jessica and her boyfriend broke up. Once again, Jessica didn't get an explanation. She felt crushed sitting in her room alone. How can this happen again? She began thinking about the Seattle vacation and her mind trailed off, thinking about Aaron. She enjoyed his company, his sense of humor, but most importantly, his kindness. 
Since the first meeting went well, Alice and Jessica went back to Seattle for another trip. This time, Aaron took the opportunity to get to know Jessica. Aaron and Jessica went for a walk one evening. They enjoyed spending the time together and didn't want to go home yet. They ended up talking about their dreams, life, and DNA. With each passing day, Jessica's feelings for Aaron got stronger and stronger. She realized her daughter's biological father was making his way into her heart. He was 53 years old at the time, but he had an undeniable enthusiasm for life, and Jessica loved that. He was thoughtful, persistent, and intelligent. Jessica was so attracted to his mind and heart. Jessica spent four decades believing that she would only feel complete with another woman. She was only attracted to women for such a long time, but after her wife left, she opened her heart to men too. Even though she welcomed men into her life, her feelings for Aaron were different. This was all so new and exciting for Jessica. He had an extremely educated mind, but Jessica loved how he can transform into a goofy, fun guy. He was musically inclined and had a cool way of doing things. He was caring, passionate, and treated her how every man should treat a woman, like a princess. Since she smiled whenever she thought about him, Jessica knew she was falling in love. Jessica was in her mid-40s at the time, and she wasn't getting any younger, and Aaron was already in his 50s. They were both mature enough to know what they want and knew that what they feel for each other is real. The two promised each other that they would have the best times together and it started in the summer of 2017. Jessica and Alice moved to Aaron's co-op. Since there was plenty of room, Aaron's kids slowly moved in one by one. Even though he didn't raise them as kids, it was nice to catch up with them as adults. Plus, he liked that they saw him as a cool father. Then there was a twist that made Aaron feel like the luckiest man in the world. Jessica was pleasantly surprised when she realized it would be easy for her to welcome her boyfriend's other kids. Not only did it not bother her, but she also enjoyed it. Deep in her heart, she felt like she could see herself taking care of them forever. She wasn't sure if maybe the magic of the DNA test was playing tricks on her. But then when she closed her eyes, Jessica knew she was exactly where she was supposed to be. The family dynamic completely changed. Instead of just her and Alice, she was with Aaron and her new stepchildren. Jessica felt her wounds beginning to heal, but what made her the happiest was to see how happy her daughter was. The large building came to life as soon as Aaron's children started moving in. Aaron claimed that in 1994, he donated sperm twice a week. In fact, last time he checked, there were more than 60 potential matches. Aside from some of his kids, Aaron's mom also moved in, and she brought her cat named Bill. By living with his mother, Jessica was able to learn more about Aaron. The more she discovered about him, the more in love she was with the father of her daughters. She felt so happy and so lucky to be around so many kind people. It made her rethink her life, the world, her dreams, and her family. Even though she was happy, she had one more wish. Artificial insemination has been in practice for quite a while now. Men who donate their sperm don't normally know where their vitals will go. I mean, they can walk past their children in the street or sit next to them on a bus and have no idea it's their offspring. Aaron was happy this wasn't the case for him. He was incredibly thankful that he was given the opportunity to know a few of his children. He did initially sign papers that he would never fight for custody. Turns out he didn't need to. His kids wanted to find him and they were the ones who chose to live with him. What makes everything better is that they all had their mother's permission or approval. Jessica and Dallas finally felt joy and happiness in their new home and their new big blended family. However, there is one thing still on her mind. There is an empty place in their heart for Soren. Jessica never stopped trying. Even from Seattle, Jessica kept trying to contact her ex-wife. She just wanted things to be settled in the right way. Aaron was nothing but supportive of Jessica and her efforts to find Soren. After all, Soren was his child too and he would love to meet her. They wanted to know that she has a big family waiting to welcome her in. To this day, the family wishes Soren happiness, love, and safety. They still hope to see her again someday.